Namaste and greetings. Let us talk about Holy Mother Sri Sharada Devi from the perspective of spirituality. Spirituality is a term which is being used more and more today, especially in the post pandemic days, because we have realized that the physical dimension is not the only dimension. The physical dimension is one dimension and beyond that there is something else. This difference of being, you know, spirituality on one side and the material on one side, this kind of a thing we don't find in Sri Sharada Devi. In fact, she spiritualizes everything. We find this aspect of spiritualizing even the most mundane, the simplest of things as a very important point in Sri Sharada Devi's life. This was realized more and more by people who were with her. Today, if we read those ideas, we can see how we can also learn from them. For instance, let me begin by quoting what Swami Vivekananda said. Swami Vivekananda considered Holy Mother Sharada Devi to be the ideal, you know, complete ideal, and that he said will spiritualize the whole world. Not only Indian women, not only people who are devoted to her, but she has this capability, you know, to give the spiritual dimension, the spiritual orientation to the world. These are the words of Swami Vivekananda. The ideal lived and taught by her, her here is Sharada Devi, the Holy Mother, would not only spiritualize the efforts for the emancipation of women in India. You know, spiritualize emancipation, because at this time, the women's question was a big question. And many of the social reformers were speaking about women's emancipation. So he's, what does he say? He says it will spiritualize the emancipation, not be an aggressive emancipation or a destructive, violent emancipation. He says it will spiritualize the emancipation, but also influence and penetrate into the minds and hearts of people all the world over. Not only here, you know, Indian emancipation is one. The second is that it will influence the people all over the world. This is the concept which, you know, uh, we have to remember when we are talking about spirituality. Now, usually we say that spirituality comes to people who are able to renunciate. You know, they have to renounce. This renunciation is what is important. In fact, when people said that Sri Ramakrishna taught the gospel that every religion is true, as many paths, so many goals. You know, uh, the goal is single. So, as many paths, so many ways of reaching that single goal. This is what he said. So, this universal religion, this is what people used to say. People were all writing about it. Then the mother said, no. More important than this was Sri Ramakrishna's renunciation, his ability to give up, to renounce. This is what was most important. So to understand mother's spirituality, we should also understand that she was a model of renunciation. She could give up everything, whichever she wanted. First and foremost, she was willing to give up the conjugal bliss 
which a married woman wants. You know, she wants a husband who's devoted to her, a lot of children, an ordinary normal life and so on. But when Sri Ramakrishna asked her, do you want to drag me into the world? She says, no. Why do you think I want to drag you into the world? I don't want to do that to you. I want to be your companion in your spiritual journey. You know, we have to uh, follow the process which we have. The term for the wife, you know, we say sahadharmini. So in dharma, you are the companion. And that is what the mother said. So she spiritualized her marriage. You can see how immaculate, how wonderful a relationship they had, but it was completely a spiritual relationship. She renounced, you know, everything which she had. Suppose she needed money or she needed a good life or she needed a huge, you know, property, etc. Mathur Babu, who was providing everything, you know, who was the proprietor of the uh, Dakshineshwar temple and the son-in-law of Rani Rashmani, who made this temple, passed away before Sharada Devi came to Dakshineshwar. So the master said, oh, my Mathur is no more. Had he been there, you would have had a wonderful life. But the mother did not want, she did not hanker for that wonderful life. Later in life also, she could never ask anybody for anything. Sri Ramakrishna realized that she was fond of wearing jewels. So he made, he said, whatever money I get from the temple, let me make some jewelry. She said, Pridhe, to the nephew, make some bangles like the vision I saw of Sita wearing bangles. You know, they were twisted round ones. The mother used to wear all of them. Suddenly some devotees came and they said, oh, your husband has renounced everything. How is it that you're wearing so many jewels? She took out all the jewelry. She said, I don't need them. I don't want them. Because they were given to me, I'm wearing them but I don't really want any of these things. So she kept them inside. When others came, they said, Mother, you are Lakshmi. You are the goddess of these jewels, these wealth, this, you know, plenty. So if you remove the jewels, it will be very inauspicious. Please wear them. So she didn't have any problem. If she was with jewels, she was happy. If she was without it, she was equally happy. This is the kind of renunciation which we have in her, in her life. You know, she would live in a large family, but she never had attachment to the family. She would look after each one of them as though they were dearest to her. But as Sri Ramakrishna used to give the example, you know, Live in the world as though you are the maid servant. The maid servant says that this child is my Ramu, but the child is not her Ramu. The child is the owner's son. She's only a worker. Tomorrow she will leave the job. Ramu will remain behind and she will go away. No attachment at all. So that is how the mother lived. No attachment to anything. She did her duty, she, did a, she gave a lot of love and affection, but she did not allow it to tie it, her down. It was not a bondage. It was not making her a prisoner. This was the quality of her spirituality. In her mother's own words, let me give, says, I live among all these things, but I have no attachment to them. I live among all these things, but I have no attachment to them. There was a time when every day, many scores of people would come, meet Sri Ramakrishna, eat and all. It was a very, very busy life. Suddenly after the passing away of Sri Ramakrishna, 
when she was alone in the village, there was nobody. She would not see the face of a person for days together. But for her, that was also a spiritual benefit. She never felt that spirituality implied being in the center, living in a temple, or any of those things. She said, spirituality is in your attitude, in the mold of your mind. She used to say, the mind is everything. You know, this word you will find in her sayings, the gospel of the Holy Mother. The mind is everything. So we have to first check our mind. Is it that the mind has spiritual ideals? Then it is wonderful. I already told you about the renunciation of the Marwari's money earlier. So we have another example. She could have grabbed the money. One of the disciples made a house. That also I've mentioned already. But she did not hanker for that house. She did not say, I have to live because it's a wonderful house. Now, but is so uncomfortable. She did not do that. That is renunciation. Then, of course, the whatever work she did throughout the day for her was worship. You know, cleaning, sweeping, wiping, saving the cooked food. You know, real fish were caught, live fish, and she would hang it on the ceiling and keep for the next day. Every work for her was the work which was spiritual. There was no difference between secular work and spiritual work for her. When she cooked for people, she cooked with a wholehearted commitment with all positive thoughts so that the food became like amrit. It became like elixir, nectar, because all good thoughts had gone, good spiritual vibrations had gone into the cooking of the food. The food was not cooked casually. The food was not served casually. One day, one of her nieces was serving food in a disrespectful way. She said, we cannot do that. We should never be disrespectful when we are serving food to somebody. So let us show respect. Let us mark our respect. Then only we will be able to become spiritual. I also gave you the example of the broom. Like that, she had wonderful spiritual qualities. You know, she says, love the broom which sweeps your house. People would cut the vegetable peels, you know, the skin of the vegetable. We eat the inside, we throw away the skin. She said, don't do that. The skin we owe to the animals. So keep the skin in one place, the vegetable peelings. When you see an animal, please feed it to that animal. See the highest spirituality? Spirituality is the connection between all created beings. We are human. We cannot be selfish. We have to look at the created beings, other created beings, that is the animals also, plants also. When she went to Ganga to have a bath, she would fill her pot with water. And on the way, whatever plants she could find, she would put a little water to each of those plants. So she was giving them food. She was giving the animals food. She might not have an animal of her own. She's not giving it to any animal. Any stray hungry animal was getting her benefit. So you can see spirituality is this unity, unity between all creatures, all God's creations are one. This she has showed us, she has taught us by being spiritual. Now, we look at the word spiritual. We have in it the word ritual. If you remove spi, then we are left with the word ritual. So what is ritual? Ritual is worshipping by carrying out the procedures which are given. Early morning, we do puja or we do prayer or we do namaz. 
all these things are ritualistic because these are conjoined. This is tradition. In prayer, we put, you know, some incense, we put some uh, lamps, we put some flowers and, you know, some prasad, everything we do, ritual. But what happens to the mind? Is the mind really committed to what we are doing? Or is it only a external, surfacial attitude? We have beautiful bhakti saints talking about this. You know, Kabir Das says that you are turning the mala in your fingers and your mind is turning. You know, turning the mala in fingers is you are reciting your mantra. You are doing your japa. But your mind is turning. Who will I cheat today? How many people will I deceive today? And so on. That is not spirituality. Spirituality is this wholehearted commitment. So ritual is not spiritual. You cannot say I go to the temple every week. So I'm highly spiritual. The mother did not do that. People used to come to talk to her. They would come spending a lot of money. Very poor people. She would give them a lot of priority. She would not say, okay, rich people, VIPs can come to me. Poor people cannot come. She would treat them all equally. And if it was time for worship, she would say, please wait. If the worship is five minutes delayed, the ritual is delayed, no problem. But here is the real worship. The real worship is helping these people get some spiritual food helping these people get some spiritual succor. So if people asked her for initiation, sometimes in the railway station, sometimes lying on a bed, sometimes in very odd places, she would give them initiation because she did not believe in this ritual. Once when they were traveling, she was cooking some rice to give it to the master's portrait, worship Sri Ramakrishna and then continue. It was cooking under a tree. Suddenly the mud pot broke and the cooked rice fell down in the ground. Others would have said, oh, it is so inauspicious. We have to cook again. What will we do? There was no time. They had to start the journey. So she picked up a little food from the top. She said, Master, today I can't give you anything more than this. It is your will that rice fell down. Now please eat this little bit and start the journey. So it is not ritual which is making her spiritual. It is the attitude which is making her spiritual. When we look at the people around who are so busy in rituals, then we look at the mother's life, the mother's experiences, we realize that just fulfilling the letter of religion is not spirituality. Spirituality is something else. That is why many people today are saying that we are spiritual, but we are not religious. You know, spiritual, but not religious. SBNR is a huge movement. Of course, it's not become a very popular movement, but the concept is very significant. That religion, very often people understand religion as ritual. Spiritual is slightly better, higher, and more meaningful because it takes you inward. It takes you into another dimension, which the mother is showing. Now, all of us are very attached to the body. Spiritual is supposed to be beyond the body. The mother shows us how this is possible. In those days in the villages, treatment was very strange. You know, it was not like the treatments we have today because medical science has progressed. If you had a problem with the spleen, then they would take a burning cinder and they would burn that part of the abdomen where the spleen is there. People had to be tied to the cot so that they didn't jump up and run away. And they would shout and scream and cry, but that burning was done. This was supposed to be the cure. So mother had this problem. You know, she was very ill. So the problem was the spleen. 
she decided to go for this treatment. Then when they were trying to tie her hands and legs, she said, don't worry. I will not jump up. I will not make a sound. You please go ahead and do it. She took her mind away from the body completely. She lied. She was lying there. Still, the treatment was going on. Very painful, burning treatment. She did not show any impatience or any pain. That means there is a spiritual dimension, a dimension which takes us away from this pain. We find it in Sri Ramakrishna's uh, life when he had cancer of the throat. We find in the life of Ramana Maharshi, great people have shown us how this is possible. The spiritual dimension, the spirituality, strength of spirituality, which takes your mind away from the pain of the body. Then, of course, you know, when Sri Ramakrishna said, Sharda is Saraswati, he wanted her to give spiritual knowledge to people. So this was her, you know, he also said that you have to do a lot of spiritual work. I'm not able to do, I'm going now. Please do a lot of work. And for the remaining time, you know, 1886, the master passed away. 1920, the mother passed away. For all these years, she did a lot of spiritual ministry. She gave spiritual knowledge to people. She gave spiritual ideals by practicing them. Now, when Sri Ramakrishna was very ill, she went to the temple to pray. She said, God, please make him well. Till you make him well, I will not move from here. I will not eat. I will not sleep. I won't do anything. So she was lying there in the temple, praying for the good health of Sri Ramakrishna. Suddenly, in a vision, she saw that all the pots, you know, which were kept one on top of the other, they broke completely. Suddenly she woke up from the vision. The breaking of the pot is a ritual in our last rites. If you have seen anybody's last rites in the cremation ground, you will know that breaking of the pot is symbol of releasing the soul. So the mother, you know, the mother was feeling very sad that Sri Ramakrishna is so ill. But she accepted. She said, okay, now God has shown me that he's not going to be cured. This is highly spiritual. This acceptance that life is temporary, we cannot hold on to life. It is bound to pass. You know, we see somebody else dying, we say, oh, I'm still alive. But my turn will also come. Everybody's turn will come. We will go. The mother is teaching us how to accept, you know, how to be welcoming in this kind of a reality. This is very important spiritually. Now, the mother used to get up early in the morning and she would meditate for a long time when she was in Dakshineshwar. This kind of schedule she had for herself. But she realized that, you know, once when she was ill, that timetable broke. But she was powerfully spiritual. She realized, she said, see, I slackened my practice. When I became ill and I recovered, I should have got back to my practice. But I did not do that. Therefore, I need to understand that practice is very important for spirituality. Unless we do spiritual disciplines, the spirituality will not awaken in us. Therefore, she showed by practice, from the young age to the old age, she showed by practice how we need to practice spirituality. But it is not enough only to practice spirituality for half an hour, one hour, two hours but to spiritualize 
entire life. Life itself is spiritual. And for this, what do we require? We require peace of mind. So the mother says, and I have given this many times, if you want peace of mind, that is, if you want to be spiritual, do not find fault with others. You know, don't say negative things at any time. Don't criticize, don't complain, don't say negatives. If you can do that, that means you are progressing in the path of spirituality. The mother's spirituality was also seen in a vision by her parents before her birth. Her father, Ramchandra Mukhopadhyay, saw the goddess riding on the tiger next to the river Amodar. Her mother, Shama Shundari, in her own maternal village, <coughs> Shihor, she saw a young girl coming and holding her by saying, I'm coming to your house. So these were the divine visions. And the mother was treated as a goddess throughout her life. But did it mean that she became very high and mighty? No. She showed us the path of spirituality. And she told us that to be really spiritual, you have to take control of your mind. She said, the mind is like a wild elephant. You know, if you don't control the wild elephant, it goes out of control. So please don't do that. Control that wild elephant, bring it in the right path. And whatever you are doing, you do as an offering to God. You know, this is what the Bhagavad Gita also tells us. How to be spiritual. Do a job, but don't do it as I am doing the job. Do it as an offering. If you go to the prayers of Ramakrishna Mat temple, you will find, you know, at the end of it, they give it to Sri Ramakrishna. They say, Sri Ramakrishna Arpanamastu, giving it all to the God, not keeping it for ourselves. So this is how the mother was. Then the mother gave a wonderful example of this. You know, one day when she went to bathe, she saw a Brahmin. She gave him a fruit and she said, I'm giving you not only the fruit, but also the fruit of the fruit. Everybody was puzzled. What is she saying? What is the fruit of the fruit? Will the fruit have another fruit? No. The result, the fruit of the fruit. What is giving? Giving is a wonderful spiritual experience. You know, seva, to give to somebody, to be unselfish. That is spiritual. But so after doing something spiritual, you get a good result. So I'm not only giving you a fruit to eat, but I'm also giving you the good result, the good karma, the prarabdha of this activity. This idea is very important for us to remember when we are talking about Sri um, uh, Sharada Devi, the Holy Mother, and spirituality. When we talk about spirituality, we have to remember that spirituality is not limited to our attitude of worship or to a little part of day or week or month. Spirituality should cover the entire 24-7 throughout our life. And that is what the mother shows with all our, her experiences. At this point, let us now read more about the mother. I have shared some of my ideas with you. I will now depend on you to read and inculcate. In the meantime, I will also read silently to myself, inculcate. Namaste, and thank you for watching all these programs. My gratitude also to Swami Sri Kantanandaji Maharaj, who has given me this opportunity to tell you such wonderful ideas which I was eager to share about the mother. Namaste, and thank you.